Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Coach Ahmad, and he is an amazing gentleman. He helps people uh, transition from their personal job to being able to be a, an entrepreneur. He is a clarity coach, and what he does is he really works with people, helping them through the transition of really you know, doing what they really want to do in life and being successful at it. So he's here today to tell you a little about him himself, what he does, and some tools and strategies to help you advance as a successful person in the business world. And if you're looking to transition and you want you need to keep your old job, but you want to transition to a new career, listen to what he says, because he has some amazing advice that will just knock you off your socks. So Ahmad, it's a pleasure to meet you today. And I am so excited to have you on the show. Thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure to meet you as well. And thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. So tell me a little about yourself. So currently I'm a clarity coach. Actually, my coaching business started like 10 years ago. And then I had to uh, change the direction, change the direction and again and again until I found out that what I can offer people is a holistic approach. To their lives because if i if i address only money only emotions only belief system usually people get stuck uh, down the line so i was right. kind of eliminating that possibility as much as i can and that's what where i decided okay, i have to be clarity coach where i clarify to people oh, there well, where are they standing and where are they heading before even they started i like that i like that so when you work with clients, you know, do you find that a lot of people are searching for their purpose in life, that it's hard for them to really, you know, um, because I, I know people that, you know, are struggle to figure out what their purpose in life is, what, you know, you know, they might not feel happy with what they're doing. They feel like they're getting up in the morning and they're dragging their feet out of bed because they're not doing the what makes them happy. And, you know, sometimes people are having a hard time figuring out what makes them happy. And, you you know, that transition could be, you know, and then when you finally figure out that transition could be scary, you know, you know, trying to get ready to, you know, build a whole new career while you're working, but then you want to get, you want to slowly weigh yourself out of there so you can actually, you know, be in the career that's going to make you happy. You know, what are some of the things that you observed, you know, some of the, uh, and what are some of the, you know, maybe tools or strategies or advice you have for people? Okay, so uh, there are two issues I observe in people again and again and again. It's money and emotions. They don't know how to deal with money. They don't know how to deal with their emotions. They call it passion. But when I work with people, it's it's we end up, it's not passion. It's just feeling good. That's what they are after. Yeah. But then they, they need money to be able to function in real life. So when I started to look at this subject in this way, kind of things made sense, but then they didn't. And let me tell you how. When people start to think in terms of money, they say, okay, what are we going to do? We have this job, we have this responsibility, we have families, we have, what should we do? And then I thought, okay, why not transitioning to entrepreneurship? But then it's too risky. If you have responsibility and you make that transition, entrepreneurship is not as simple as, it, as we see it. It's what we see is the outcome. But the yes. process is kind of difficult because in the end of the day, you will need to fund your transition. It's not free. Although I see there are a lot of free ways to do it. This is not my way. I don't believe it that much because I believe in why not just keep your job and then pay for services that helps you transition to entrepreneurship. So this is number one. Don't leave your job. Don't like my suggestion is never leave your job before you guarantee that you have a source of income. You created the service and it generates income for you. Before that, don't leave your job. This is number one. Number two, you have to take care of your emotions. You have to learn to feel good. It's not about your passion. It's about feeling good. The question is, is there a specific thing you can do to feel good? Yeah, there are. But also you can just make a decision to feel good. Is it that easy? The answer is no. All everything comes with practice. You need to practice. Once you practice feeling good, feeling good, feeling good, now your body starts to receive that message. That's where you start to feel good. And once you feel good, 
now the word passion does not even cross your mind anymore because what you meant in the first place by passion is I want to feel good. Yeah. No, that's so true. I think a lot of people, you know, they get very scared to make that transition. Change is very scary, you know, and a lot of people, you know, fear change and, you know, they want to do certain things in life, but they're scared. Do you come across a lot of times that people, you know, have these dreams and aspirations, but they're so scared that they're stuck in a career that they're not happy in, but they're too fearful to move forward and start to make changes in their lives and do the things they really wanted to? Definitely. I see it all the time. Actually, it happened with me. That's a transition to come to this conclusion that never leave your job before you create as, as a source of income through your service or product is b because of what I have seen. It's it's a scary. It's not easy. And if I tell people just just take a rest in that sense, it will be irresponsible from my end. So, yeah. yes, I see it. It's it's almost always the case. How will I make it? It's almost always. Do you have some like suggestions for people, you know, to break through that fear and, and make it? Do you have like some things that they could do, some tools or strategies that will help them actually break through that fear and, and, and start to help them move forward into a more prosperous yeah. lifestyle? Yes, definitely. So if I will do it myself, this is the stages. This is what, how will I do it myself? So number one, I'll say it again and again and again, never leave your job. I cannot emphasize this point and I cannot say how important it is. Never leave your job. It doesn't matter how bad it is because it's a constant, continuous source of income. Even if you lose money, you still have that income coming. That's number one. Number two, you have to learn to deal with the emotions in your body because you will be frustrated and you will, the emotions will be stuck in your body. You must learn to deal with these emotions because in a lot of time, when you don't deal with these emotions that are stuck in your body, they will drive your behavior. And sometimes it's self-sabotaging behaviors. So yes. this is number two. Number three, I would suggest for people to start a service, not product, because product will require more funding than service. Service, in a way, you already have the skills, you have the knowledge, and probably you need to develop a little bit more knowledge or skills with, within, your, uh, within your skill set. But still, service is way easier than product and it it i have seen it again and again and it can be funded through your job it doesn't matter how little you earn you can find a service for um, to start a business and this is how i uh, these are the three steps and number four once you get the service going now it's your option whether you keep your job and you keep the service or you make the transition uh, my suggestion is it depends on your mentality. It depends on your uh, how you want your life to be. It's uh, I have seen people want to make that transition. I have seen people, they said, no, I'm happy with, uh, I have created a service. I'm happy with, with two sources of income. I'll keep my job. I'll keep the service. I'm happy with my life. Yeah. That's it can be very, it can be very scary. And, and you know what I, I've noticed too, is that, you know, when you have those emotions inside you, a lot of people don't know how to deal with them. Are there ways that people, you know, could actually deal with those emotions? A lot of people I see repress those emotions and, and it is, it becomes self-sabotaging. People, you know, end up sabotaging their own self and their own abilities to strive in life because they don't know how to deal with their emotions. You know, are there ways that people could actually, you know, different different techniques that people could actually not repress their emotions, but actually work on overcoming the emotions that they're dealing with when they go through this strenuous, you know, transition, when they're trying to, you know, go from one career to being able to, you know, have the, uh, the, the courage to change it and then dealing with all the scared emotions and all the fear and then put in the stress of putting everything together, you know, all these emotions are just raring inside them. You know, how are the best ways to deal with these emotions so they can, you know, productively move forward? Okay. I'll, the, uh, I'll explain it in terms of, let me say it this way. There is, a masculine way there is a feminine way to to do it it's it's okay. up to the people so i use the masculine way which is action when i don't feel good i take massive action 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 however the actions are conscious i make a decision and i take action i ignore my emotions completely they become totally irrelevant i have because my mindset is i have a responsibility i gotta do what i gotta do regardless of how i feel 
it's my I have to put my emotions aside for now. This is tend to be the masculine way, the feminine way, which I, so I use both way actually actually, but I rely heavily on the masculine way. The feminine way is to feel your emotions, to accept them, to just don't resist them, don't suppress them, don't push them down, just let them be. Once you let the emotion be, they will be released from your body. But this is the thing, the disadvantage of this is sometimes it takes time. So when you sit with your emotions, sometimes you will be frustrated. Sometimes you will feel nothing is happening. But if you sit with your emotions and you are listening to it, as if you are listening to a close friend, listening to what they are, what they have to say, it's a matter of time and they will be released from uh, from your energy. And once they are released, now you now you are clear. Now you can make uh, a decision. So these are the main two ways I rely on in dealing with emotions. Now, is there a, you mentioned a feminine way? Is there a, a feminine way, a different way of doing it also? Yeah, it's it's the feeling it because. So when you are feeling, okay, when you are feeling good, basically you are acknowledging your emotions, you deal with it, you, can, you kind of take it, taking care of your emotions. The masculine way, it's not taking care of the emotions, it's ignoring them. Yes. Yeah, so, but yeah, with uh, care is the feminine energy, you care for your emotion, you will love it, you love yourself, and your emotions will be free, you will be released, definitely. So this is what I call the feminine because the way I think is care, love is related to the feminine, where the feminine energy can provide these things where the masculine energy, it doesn't, it just takes action. So right. this is, yeah. So when so after you've gone through that and you've gone through you working through the emotions and handling it the way that you want it to be handled, you know, then what would be the next step of moving forward? The next step is I'll have to, to look at my responsibilities. Definitely, I rely heavily what what are my responsibilities and what I have to do. So when yeah, that's it's it's in the end in the end it's about the, to reach a point where you act and decide based on the responsibility, not based on emotions. Whether you ignore them, whether you release them, whether whether you love them, but in the end you want to reach that point where when I make a decision, I make it because I have responsibilities. I have. I, ha I have to do what I have to do. So that's what the next step is. What are your responsibilities? You have to know them. Uh, do you have a business? Do you have family? Do you have something you have to do? That will be your next steps. So do you do you do this by creating a like short-term and long-term goals with your client? Maybe creating a trajectory, like a plan? Or do you, do you, do you have them list the things that they need to work on to help themselves? You know, I had, a, cause a lot of times some people can get overwhelmed. There's so much to do and they just don't know where to begin and they get overwhelmed. Is there like techniques that they could do that, that, that will help them organize what they need to do and then break it down so they could slowly work on it towards a, 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 a positive outcome? Okay. Let me articulate this well. So the way I, I, the way I deal with my clients is I work with them in person and they have access to me all of the time. So basically, do they have plan? Usually not because I have the plan and I will, uh, I'll be with them during their journey. It's, uh, it's, it's not just one session and we end up. No, I have to follow up with them and see how are they going and, and hold them accountable. So this is my way. But if you are looking for a plan, if people want to do it themselves, you can look at it this way. You look at the emotion as if you are dealing with on, an onion. Once you you remove a, a layer, you will have another one. You remove the next, the next, the next. You will end up with little tiny one. And then you'll end up, there is, that's it. Once you reach that point, there is no emotions. And this is how like you, this is how you look at your emotions. So take, uh, you need pen and paper, definitely. So you feel, let's say, for example, you feel scared of your next step. So you write fear, and then you feel it, you accept it. That once you once you release the fear, there is another emotion will show up. Sometimes it's fear, sometimes it's anger. There is another emotions, and once you once you release that, another emotions will come up. In the end, once you release all these emotions, all these layers, what happens is there is only calmness, there is only peace. And that's how you know you have released all the emotions that you are struggling with. Excellent. 
Now, when you, when you were going through this, once, you know, once you've gotten to a certain point, so they, once they start developing their career and they're starting to work on creating their, their business there, and they're becoming that entrepreneur, you know, um, are these, are these people that are usually open that, that you work with that are opening their own businesses outside the home? Or are these people who have inside businesses that are working more online and creating services online? You know, um, what is the, the main goal when you say entrepreneurship? You mean for people who, who are coming yeah. to you? So usually they are professional. I have seen this team again. They, they are uh, they are still working. They have professional work, uh, but then they have tried so many things and they got tired and nothing is working. That sense of overwhelm, that sense is nothing working. I am tired. That's the theme in all the people I am working with. So basically, they already tried so many things and things are not working. That's where I come in. But I I don't meet a lot of people actually. Actually, I do remember I met people who didn't try before they come to me. I don't meet those people. It's almost always when they tried everything, that's where they reach me out. A lot of times, you know, from what you're saying, a lot of these people, it seems like they have also emotional and physical burnout from from being in the in the atmosphere and the environment that they've been in. You know, it's kind of draining, and that's why they are motivated to try to figure out what's going to make me happy. What where can I go? What kind of job and what kind of career can I have that's going to bring joy to my life? And you know, when when a person is so stressed and they're emotionally and mentally stressed. You know, what are some of the things you do to help them regain hope, regain energy, regain, you know, themselves to a, a healthy state where they'll be able to actually start making these changes so they can prepare for a new life and a new future? Okay, so actually, this is one of my favorite points when I work with people. When someone contacting me that I'm overwhelmed and nothing, uh, nothing is working, my, it's almost always my answer is let's have a phone call now. It's now, now. It's it's usually, I, we will not schedule it. We have to do it right now. So we'll start the session and then I'll have to, cl I have to understand where they are standing and then we will not end the session until they are crystal clear about the problem. If there is emotions, we will release it during the session and then we will take the next step. So basically it's, I love to hold people's hands in their journey. It's leaving them in the hand, mainly in this journey. I know how hard it is. And so I have seen so many people because like they lose their interest, they lose their energy because they are left behind. Like I work with them once this was this used to be my style where we worked one session and then we have to meet next week. But what I find is they struggle in this period where there is seven days, there is a struggle. So I changed I changed everything where no, if you have a problem, you have to contact me and we have to deal with it immediately. And this is how I deal with people when they are overwhelmed during their journey. Nice. So you're so you really work one on one with them. Like a lot of times when they're making this transition, you know, how long you know does the average person does it take them to be able to really get to the point where they're they're beginning their entrepreneurship? Because it, it does take a long time to start a new business. Like most of the time, you know, it could take several years before your business starts to take off. You know, a lot of people, you know, they have to build a foundation and, and you know, after they build a foundation, they have to find clients and there's a whole process. But once, you know, while they're while they're doing this, you know, you know, how long does it take them to between having their job, gaining their courage, figuring out what they want to do, and then, and then beginning it, you know, it, it, with the, with the proper coaching, how, you know, how quick or how, you know, how long can it take to, before they, they really start getting, getting their life into this transition that, you know, you try to help them, you know, develop. It depends on where they are standing when we meet first time. So number one, I will look at it for, uh, what's their financial standing. This is very important because I rely heavily on, um, using the money you are earning it to create a service is number one. Number two, how is their emotional well-being? Are they doing well emotionally? And number three, how how are they doing in terms of commit, commitment? Because I have worked with people for for two months. Usually, it's in my estimation, it's two months, okay? It's to make the, kind of that transition. Uh, let yes. me say it again. Transition doesn't mean success. 
but you are already, you made that transition. Now, now everything is clear to you. The time is clear, the strategy is clear, everything. So it takes around, I'll average it with two months, but then yes. what people are unaware of is the commitment that, that it will require once you make that transition. Once you create everything, now, okay, now there is there is a stereotype where to make the transition to become entrepreneur or that it's easy or once you build your business or once you build your service and you have just just to sit down and not do anything well that's that's the stereotype and it's completely it's completely wrong okay it's it's uh, that yeah it's completely wrong because once you create everything there is a commitment and there are works to do and as a matter of fact sometimes there are way more work to do than before so just yeah. keep this in mind. It the transition is more work, not less. Yes. Oh, I agree completely. The transition is definitely a lot more work and takes a lot more energy and commitment. You know, if you're not willing to to put all that energy and commitment into it, you really have to be resilient also. Because what I've noticed also, you know, you can tell me how you feel about it, is that you know, you're gonna have a lot of successes, but you'll have a lot of failures on the on the road to becoming your own entrepreneur. And you know, people have to not be so hard on themselves. You know, if they if if they try and it doesn't work out the way they anticipated, then they they should look at it as a learn experience and not look at it so much as I failed, I'm horrible, I'm terrible, and all these negative, you know, words come into their into their mind, but they should look at it as I'm strong, I tried something, it didn't work out as planned, I've learned from it, now I'm going to try something else. Do you look at things like that also? Definitely, there is. Okay, let me rephrase this. Sometimes I look at it as lesson, sometimes I don't, because there are certain situations when I work with people, if I tell them this is a lesson, they will be, get angry. They'll say, no, this is a So I have to address the emotions first. Once we address the emotions, then we can say, yes, it's a lesson. Now, yes, we can say it's a lesson. You got, yeah, this is the end outcome. It's a lesson. Okay, you have to understand that these uh, these issues you have, they are lessons you have to learn. But, but the issue is when are you going to acknowledge that this is a lesson? That's the issue. It's 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 sometimes you have to address the emotions before, sometimes you have to address the belief system. You have to address something before you come to that realization, that aha moment. Wow, this is a lesson. So I learned the lesson. Now let's move to the next step. This is how, yes, this is how I look at. I think that's a good analysis. And you know, a lot of times I think people, you know, um have to really understand that it, it's not gonna be as easy as it looks. A lot of times people see on the outside, they see, you know, people have succeeded as being an entrepreneur and it looks, you know, looks so wonderful from you know, they look at people who have done it for years and years and years, and you know, they don't realize that it's gonna take a while, it's gonna take a lot of hard work, and it may not be exactly the way you anticipated. And I've known many people who have become entrepreneurs entrepreneurs and what they created in their head when they began is not where they ended up. And sometimes, you know, you know, you could have U-turns in your journey and you didn't even realize you're going to have it. And, you know, people end up doing different things, but, you know, it's, it's kind of like a journey, a learning experience, you know, and I always think things are meant to be, you know, uh, but, you know, you have to be prepared for those, those U-turns and you have to be prepared that not everything is going to go exactly the way you think in your head too. What do you feel about that? Yeah, it's, you know, entrepreneurship is one of the most mysterious paths I know of. It's completely vague. You don't know, and mainly today where there's overabundance of information, you don't know where, what to learn, what not to learn, where to go, which path to take. So it's kind of mysterious way. And yes, people, it's kind of, it's unclear. When you start, you think, okay, I read this book. I learned these skills. This is business. I'll start. Once you start, and you find out mainly, mainly that in terms of, of money, that yes, it will require funding. It's not completely free. And number two, you will you must have strategy. It's not random. There is no such thing called random in business. In business, the rule number one is number talks. That's business. Business. We have to look at the numbers. And number three, a lot of people want to do it alone. My suggestion is never try to do it uh, alone. It's Honestly, deeply, I do believe it's not possible to do it alone. Find a way to cooperate with people, whether you hire people, you you kind of have your friend 
although some people said, okay, don't do it with your friend, but find a way to work with people because it's to, doing it alone is, I wouldn't say it's tough. It's basically, to me, it's preparing yourself for failure if you are doing it alone. I think you definitely need people to help you. Um, you definitely need a team of people. You could start with one person and that's great in the beginning, but to do it on your own is going to be very difficult for growth. I think, you know, when, from my own experience and from, from knowing so many entrepreneurs, when you do it yourself, it is not enough hours in the day and that's the problem. So you, you can't, it, it's very hard to grow when you only have 24 hours in a day, you're asleep in seven or eight or, you know, hours of the day. And then you wake up, you have breakfast, you have lunch, you have dinner, and then in between you're working and how many things can you accomplish in a day? And especially as an entrepreneur, you have to always, you always have to look ahead of what I think you're, you're planning on doing, you know, as you, you focus on the present, but you always have to think three months in advance, six months in advance, where am I going to be? Where do I plan to be a year from now, three years from now, five years from now? You know, I think those objectives are important because it gives you a pathway or a a long-term goal that you're trying to strive for doesn't mean you're actually going to you know do exactly what you're planning and it might not come out exactly you might make lots of usually people make lots of changes to those plans as they go along but it gives you uh, an idea an organized idea a trajectory of what you're you're headed for and to do all that and just to you know do it by yourself is i think is virtually impossible unless you're just looking to make a few dollars and, and just, you know, just do just the, the bare minimum. But if you're looking for growth and for, for real success, I think, like you mentioned, you need at least one person or a team of people, you know, the more successful you, you become, the more people you could bring on your team. I think what's your intake about that. And, and that's where keeping your job come into place. Because when I started, I have hired so many freelancers okay and you know when you hire people when you're people there are a lot of mistakes someone will not do what you want them to do there so when you have when you have your job and you have the source of income even if something is not working you can just get rid of the person and hire a new one that's so that idea of hi, trying with different people it it, it will be necessary it does actually it doesn't matter how much you pay probably in the beginning you will you will hire the wrong people because no one will get your point 100% all of the time. And then you have to rehire people. So this is my intake. And, and yes, it's, you have to hire, my suggestion is hire people, hire freelancers. It's, will you succeed in the first, uh, in the first attempt? Probably, probably not. It's, if you ask me about my personal experience, it's with some of them, we had massive success. With some, it wasn't even worth the time. So mm -hmm. yeah. That's my, that's my input in that sense. I like it. You know, I, I think, you know, as you, as you, you know, as you start to, you, you start to grow and you start to learn, you know, it, it takes time. And I think people also have to realize um, that it, you know, they have to have patience too, you know, and, and, you know, some people try to rush into things and they try to, they try to do things too fast. And, and, you know, it, you know, sometimes it takes time, you know, and if you have the right guidance, like if you have a coach, I think, you know, that makes things speed up a lot quicker because you have someone who understands what to do and they're guiding you along the way. I think, you know, in every, in every business, I think people should have one or more coaches for different things, because I think it really helps with your, the success rate and, and how fast you're going to start to move. What is your intake on that? Definitely. Do you need a coach? Definitely. It's, you have to have someone to guide you. It's, because this, I think, reading books or attending workshops, I don't know how effective that in terms of starting a business. At least in my experience, personal coach or personal mentor is is a critical. As a matter of fact, let me add. There is a let me add. The, let me help people with something really, really powerful when evaluating the people who want to help them in terms of business. Okay, when you when you are working with coach, when you are working with a mentor. You have to look, is there a strategy and is there a crystal clear outcome? This is it's a strategy, crystal clear outcome. And will they be with you or will you be left behind with only instructions? I, I don't believe in leaving people behind. So if, if I'm asking myself, it's no, if someone is not working with you all the way through the journey, to me, it's not the right person for me. 
this is this is one thing. The second thing is when you are hiring freelancers, your key question is, will we make sales? Always remember because we'll meet freelancers. Someone will say, okay, I'll have I'll I'll create a website for you. Some people say, okay, I'll do marketing. I'll do. But the question is, once you start to ask them this question, are we going to make a sales? You will know the people who understand where are you heading or not. Because once you ask this question, you will see a lot of people will not a lot of freelancers that I met. When I reach this question, they cannot answer it because they create things for you. Yes, but what you are after is sales. This is the language, numbers, and then are you making sales? And I, I think people have to realize too is, is that when you're when you're, when you're moving towards entrepreneurship, you have to learn how to sell yourself. You have to learn how to sell your service. You have to learn how to sell if it's a product. You have to, you know, there's a technique behind it. There is, you know, ways to do it. You know, a lot of people I've noticed from coaching, um, a lot of people, you know, they they do all these different things, but then they expect quick results from what they're doing. But the, the question is, are you selling yourself and you selling your service and selling your product the right way? Because you have, you know, oh, so many, so much time to grasp the person's trust in you to be able to have that a person see your abilities and to be able to understand why your product is going to help them grow and, and help them better themselves as a person. The many people, they have great ideas, they have great services, they have great products, but then they don't know how to sell it. And, you know, that being an entrepreneur, you have to understand how to sell and how to market yourself. And I think in a lot of, in a lot of ways, people are taught everything but that and they, they they don't understand why they're not making the money they should but that's a very i think very important component of being an entrepreneur it's not just creating the service or the product it's being able to sell yourself and to sell the product or service and make people understand why it's so important that they have it and how it's going to make a difference in their life definitely it's it does as you say it doesn't matter how good your product or services are. If you don't know how to sell it, if people don't see, don't notice that you have something to offer them, it's it's you will not make uh, you will not put it simple. You will not make money. You people because people don't know you in the first place. And I have seen so many great product services, but because people don't know how to sell them, they get stuck. It's like and then they give up. And let me say something. What sales is caring when i sell that means i care so if i if i meet someone it's actually i learned this from one of my clients or from actually it's, it, she wasn't a client she reached me out on facebook one day and she reached me out and i didn't sell her so I, because at the time i didn't want to put any pressure on my on the person and i didn't want to sell anything and then one or two days later, the person sent me back and said, hey, why didn't you care? Why didn't you sell me your service? I said, you were, you were just talking. You were, she said, no, I asked you about your service. You should have sold me. So she got, she became unhappy and then she left. I lost her. Since yeah. then, I just changed everything. It's when I reach people, the first thing I, I look at, if do I care for this person? Do I have something that helps them transform their lives? If the answer yeah. is yes, then I care. And then I will sell you. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. You know, you have to work with people that you could relate to and they have to be able to relate to you. And I think also people have to realize they can't take things personally. If you have a service or if you have, you know, something that you're selling, you know, as an entrepreneur, if someone does not want your service or does not want your product, you can't take it personally because it might not be the right service or product for them. You know, they, they might like you. They might think you're a great entrepreneur. They might think you have a great business, but it might not be right for them. So a lot of times too, I think one of the biggest mistakes I see also is that people take things too personally, where, you know, you have to understand that not everything is for everyone. And you have to, and the best thing you could do as an entrepreneur is work with people who are like-minded like you, who understand you and you understand them. And that way you could help them grow. And I think that's like re a really important aspect too, when you're trying to help a, a, a business person become an entrepreneur is to understand that you can't take things personally as you're growing as an entrepreneur. What's your intake on that? Yeah, it's, I used to say, 
I want different people around me, but I changed my mind. Probably I want different different type of team around me, but different people. No, I want people who are similar to me, similar path, similar vision, similar mission. When I have team because I need different skills, that's different. But overall, yes, I look for people who are similar to, to me. And some people will say, if you didn't ha- if you didn't have people who are different from you, you will not grow. I no, it's it's actually when you have people who are similar to you, you will grow exponentially because you encourage them, they encourage you. So it's definitely I agree hundred percent with this. You have to find people who are similar to you. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today, what are some really important things that you would like to emphasize today? Okay, number one, Jim Rohn says, if you want to raise your income, you have to be more valuable than your income. But let me say something. I have seen this again and again. There is something removed from what Jim Rohn said, which is this. You have to be more valuable to the marketplace. And the interpretation of that is sales. In the marketplace, that means sales. So you have to be more valuable in the marketplace. That means you have to learn to sell what you have to the marketplace. Dealing with people in real life is different than dealing with people in the marketplace. This is number Mm -hmm. one. Number two, the important thing, again, never leave your job. I have seen so many times in this interview, but again, never leave your job. And number three, if you are happy with your life and you are fulfilled with your job, with your, uh, let's say you you may have another source of income or you may not, but if you are happy, if you are fulfilled, my suggestion is, don't listen to people, including me, who tells you that you have to have more than what you have now. If you are fulfilled, if you are happy, don't look in this direction because it's not easy as it's uh, uh, as it's uh, presented. So I, I present my what I have for people who already made the decision to move forward. But if you, are, uh, if you have a fulfilling life, I will suggest you don't need that because you have what we are seeking, fulfillment. Right. But our way is the true a kind of entrepreneurship or earning more money. And that's, that's if people are interested, if you are look, if they're looking for uh, for um, personal interaction with me, they can reach me out to my website. It's uh, Imad Aldajani, uh, E-M-A-D-A-L-D-A-J-A-N-I.com, or which is my preferred way, you can reach me to my phone through WhatsApp, which is plus six four two two five six two five seven nine zero. I love it when people reach me through WhatsApp because this is how I communicate. And working with people to me is personal. So this is all I have to tell them. I love it. I love it. And I, I think what you're doing is great. And I, I think, you know, you you really have a lot of great um, ideas. And, you know, when it comes to services, can you just like go over briefly the different services that you provide so people have a clear understanding of what you can do for them? We've talked about it throughout the conversation, but tell people the different services that you provide for them so they have a clear understanding. So mainly I have two services. One is individual session where I work with people when they are struggling with individual uh, single issue, single problem. Usually when people w- uh, get that session, it's emotional issue. And the second one, which is program, it's around two months. And it's kind of holistic approach where we have to work through what business is and what business is not. We have to deal with relationships, emotions. We have to deal with kind of, I have to deal with the person holistically. I have to address as much area of their life as possible in these two months. And uh, Why? Because this is the thing, I don't believe in addressing one problem. So I have to address money, but I have also to address your emotions, your mindset, your skills. I have to address them all because this is how change happens. Otherwise, I believe people will get stuck. And this is what I'm offering. These are my two focus programs. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing. I am so happy you came on the show, Ahmad. You have some great insight on how to really transition from, you know, your, your job to becoming an entrepreneur and doing it the safe way. This way you don't, you know, you don't lose, you know, your job, you don't lose income, you don't get overly stressed and you're not, you know, you kind of like move in, in, in a glided format, which is, you know, what you're supposed to do, you know, and, and it's good, you know, to have people like you who can guide them and give them the advice and the structure that they need in order to make the right choice 
choices and the right decisions so they can become a successful entrepreneur. So I thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing this advice. I think, you know, you gave a lot of great inf in insightful information. And I just like to say thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. You too.